All right, what's happening? Y'all, your boy Rico from Street Scores You, and I've been slipping. I've just been extremely busy with my other channel. I've been busy with a lot of stuff even outside of that channel, but now I'm getting back to these film sessions, and I feel like it's only right that we bring it back with UGA target, four-star defensive lineman, LJ McCray. If you're in all of the insider groups, if you follow all of the people and you're in the forums and stuff like that, Georgia is very high on this guy. They kind of felt like it's like Joseph Jonah, John Ye, Williams, Winery, and LJ McCray as like the, the three of the better defensive linemen in this class from everything that I'm seeing and hearing various articles, sources, reports, and stuff like that. You may be able to go ahead and throw Aiden Breeland in there as well. And I saw from somewhere, I can't remember exactly who said it, but somebody said that's close to the UGA that LJ McCray may honestly be the guy with the highest ceiling that Georgia feels like they could take and turn into the best player. Of course, Williams Winery is like the best defensive lineman in this class because of his floor. And I mean, it's debatable who's the best. But even I would say, even though he's already gone to Missouri because of the whole NIL thing where high school players can go ahead and start getting paid now, just off of the fact that he's committing to Missouri, which is crazy. Georgia needs to get in on passing that bill or whatever that is. Because that's crazy. Maybe we would have KJ Bolden, Edric Houston, and Sammy Brown, all of these guys. If if we had that bill passed, that's why it's looking like Ryan Wingo may even stay in Missouri and stuff like that. But either way, Williams Nonary is so great. I feel like because the ceiling is ridiculous, but also the floor is crazy high. LJ McCray, I mean, he has somewhat of a floor. He's not just like extremely raw. Like he's not super raw. Like Joseph Jonah Ajanye, I would consider more raw than LJ McCray. But you can argue LJ McCray has the highest selling. Now let me go ahead and warn y'all now. Go ahead and skip to where you see me doing the film sessions. You'll see the film session on the screen because I like to talk a lot. Me as a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan. If I were watching these types of videos, I would want somebody to go behind the scenes, break down everything. How does Georgia feel about the player? What are his on three rankings, his two, four, seven rankings, his measurables and stuff like that. So go ahead and skip ahead until you get to the film sessions. If you're one of those people that's literally only here for the film session, but for the rest of y'all to care about his profile, again, how he stacks with the rest of the recruiting class, I wanna break down some of the other defensive linemen we have committed and whether this guy would automatically take one of their spots or if everybody can just have a happy union and everybody come in with this 2024 commit class if we have a chance to get an LJ McCray. We also gotta talk about who's in the way of getting LJ McCray for the Georgia Bulldogs, like Florida, Florida State. He's from Daytona Beach, Florida and stuff like that. So we got to dive into that. What are Georgia's chances to even get this guy? And again, like I've already said, they're very high on LJ McCray. They're way higher on LJ McCray than all of these recruiting cycles. Like you'll see all these recruiting boards and stuff like 247 ESPN rivals on three. Georgia's higher on him than either of those places. So again, go ahead and skip ahead if you just want pure film session, because even after the intro, I'm going to do a deeper dive, like I've already foreshadowed a little bit right there. So before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm that subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button, so you get notification each and every time I release these film sessions. Y'all have been seeing I've been working on putting clips together of Georgia players making like their debuts this year so like I already uploaded like the first week of preseason what a lot of Georgia players did in those games and in practice leading up to those games I plan on doing the same thing this weekend I already uploaded with Nolan Smith and all of the Eagles players like N'Kobe Dean forced the fumble I uploaded those clips already so I'm working on a lot of content for Georgia just stay patient I'm about to get real consistent with them especially once we start to dive into the regular season oh boy I cannot wait I I'm so excited. This is not only just going to be a commit film session channel. I'm going to break down everything that's important with Georgia. Most importantly, of course, the team as we're going undefeated and going for a three-piece. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Without further ado, let's get it. L.J. McCray. Again, Georgia is higher on this guy than any 
other recruiting machine, whatever you want to call them, because on three has them as the highest rating, 34th overall, seventh defensive lineman, sixth player out of Florida. 247 has his 37th overall. ESPN doesn't even realize this guy exists, and Rivals.com didn't even really try. They just found his name. I don't know how a player out of Florida, you don't just assume they got to at the very least be better than 249, especially with the measurables he has. Let's go ahead and dive into that. The measurable are absolutely insane this guy's six foot six 280 um now they have it as 275 right there but even if you just scroll down a little bit they have it written as two. Oh, when you go to his synopsis or whatever when you go to his scouting uh page or whatever they got it 280 right here so that you know i'm not just making stuff up they also have them as ridiculous length and and large frame all of that type of stuff he's has 34.75 inch arms and 10.5 inch hands you can't teach that size you just cannot there's nothing you can do to coach a guy to have that much size you just it's literally impossible that's not how science and football works again he's from daytona beach so that's why we're struggling right now florida's in the way florida state's in the way i think as of right now these are definitely the top two um people that we have to worry about the most i've heard that georgia actually does stand pretty well with them but it's just the fact that florida and florida state are recruiting them so hard i'm not exactly sure where auburn came from because i haven't heard anything from auburn but maybe some auburn people know um why on three feels like they have a higher percentage chance of getting them i feel like georgia has a really good chance i feel like georgia has a better chance than even one of these other florida schools i feel like i think it's either florida or florida state versus georgia on a on a uh, two-way fight right now i believe it may be florida i could be tripping though um but from everything i heard georgia actually has a really good chance of getting this guy especially since we missed out on like williams winary and even like guys like even though they're a different position but like kj bolden and stuff like that now they're still recruiting kj bolden extremely hard they're gonna recruit him ridiculously hard all the way until that man puts pen to paper do not be surprised if that man would have flipped as of the day i mean especially by the time he signs we'll have a full season of georgia and florida state if georgia goes back and looks like another super, um championship contender and florida state is out there with three to five losses that may increase our chances of getting kj bolden um but yeah man lj mccray we have a full season to go florida is going to be a four or five loss team um florida state's going to be better than florida in my opinion um so i mean we have an easy chance to um anti-recruit those guys with those pitches like just come join the better team come join the team that puts players in the league better than anybody else as of the past couple of years especially defensive linemen so we just have so many things that we can say that florida and florida state just can't say florida and florida state just um just like how florida state sold the kj bolden just like how auburn sold the demarcus riddick come be a part of a rebuild be the face of a new era george is just selling hey if you want to make the most money you can at the nfl level if you want to be become the best nfl player you can be and if you want to win championships while doing it if you want to be developed to your highest potential come play for georgia but there are teams that are anti-recruiting georgia and telling people playing time well then again I, the playing time thing i hate it because we've seen freshmen come in and start immediately i mean malachi starks at safety we have a really good safety group malachi starks came in and started day one week one against oregon immediately michael williams was part of a heavy rotation the only reason michael williams didn't like completely start and get like the majority of snaps edge rusher is because he's not developed against the run yet he's not strong enough to literally set the edge be that big five tech guy that's what we're bringing in joseph jonah Ajayi to do that's what we're potentially bringing in lj mccray to do those type of builds um he's more michael williams is more of a situational pass rusher type of guy but he's just so elite at pass rushing that you want him on the field as often as possible not just third down and longs and i hope that he develops into a guy that we can keep on the field the majority of the time and just purely start at right um right edge or left edge whatever you want to put him at just five tech and if he works on that run stopping ability he should be able to play a lot we are not afraid of playing um true freshman jonel guero probably gonna play a ridiculous amount of snaps at the star position for us this year so there's no problem with georgia playing a true freshman if you can come in and dominate that well i mean raylan wilson was looking like he was going to get a lot of snaps before his injury hopefully he recovers as soon as possible so he can but our tight ends i mean uh lost and lucky and all those pierce Sperling, those guys um without the injury to um lucky without one well, those guys were project projected to play quite a bit so man that playing time thing i hate that like how you know they somehow convince recruits that they won't be able to play early for georgia because you definitely can if you're good enough 
Um, but even just besides that, um, to dive even deeper, the rest of this recruiting class, I think if we were to bring in LJ McCray, I don't think that would mess things up for like other players. Like Joseph Jonah Ajanye is still coming here. He's full blown dog. Him and Justin Williams are a pair from the same high school, Oak Ridge. And then you have Jordan Thomas, who's a pretty good player. Um, and LJ McCray, I would definitely argue is more talented. Justin Green as well from, from, from Gwinnett. Um, you know, we struggle with recruiting Gwinnett, Buford more specifically, but we got Justin Green, who's a four star player as well. We got Quintavious Johnson, who goes to Mays, um, not too far away from me on the west side of Atlanta. Um, so we have quite a bit of defense and Nam Boko too. That's another defensive lineman that we have. I don't think that with the guys that we have, LJ McCray would clash with them. I don't think any of those guys would decommit just simply because we brought in an LJ McCray. Um, so I think this class would be really solid. I mean, if you miss out on Williams, you never know maybe Williams Winery takes that high school money and decide and just decides to go to Georgia where because I'm hearing a lot of reports I'm hearing very trustworthy sources that said that Williams Winery himself preferred Georgia above all else but it was between staying home and that NIL situation where you can get paid while you're in high school um that made him end up deciding on Missouri but if NIL didn't exist if um if he wasn't from missouri he was going to georgia basically georgia was like right there with it above everybody else neck and neck with missouri and again missouri won out because of the weird nil state rule that they have that georgia definitely needs to pass immediately i don't know why we haven't done it as if today to go ahead and get that pushed through do whatever you got to do to expedite that process because that's that's cheating almost that's just an unlocked potential that's ridiculous you can make money in high school because you plan on going to a school in the same state the state that you're from what if he, you just decommit and decide to just you get that money in high school and then you still go to your dream school for um williams winery's case georgia like i mean how does that work is there some contractual obligation that they had to abide by i don't know I have no idea. I'm just, you know, spitballing right now. But yeah, man, LJ McCray, man, I'm really excited about him. I really think we have a great chance to get him. You never know, though. Florida and Florida State may put that pressure on them and talk about playing time, staying close to home, all that type of stuff, which is typically the only way we lose recruiting battles. Other than that, we typically get the guys we want. Um, but again, he's not he doesn't plan on necessarily committing maybe until he signs and by then florida will be a five loss team florida state may be like a three to five win a uh, loss team i hope i hope maybe florida state goes undefeated you never know florida state's very underrated i'm just rooting for them to be a three loss team but i think florida straight up is just so bad they're going to be a three to five loss team like seriously i mean georgia is going to be competing for a third piece so um I, i'm just i think we can sell him on that at the very least and again defensive line development now let's go ahead and get to this film session we're already like 12 minutes in and we haven't even started yet again i warned y'all to go ahead and skip ahead please skip ahead to the film session if that's all you care about um but let's go we're gonna get to it now let's go ahead and bring it up man i'm super excited let me go ahead and mute this just in case if there's anything going on there you're gonna see him play first of all five tech and three tech interior defensive line defensive tackle edge rusher all of that type of stuff which is really cool and look at the i mean the immediate ability to get around the blocker i mean he made that guy look like child's play and it doesn't even look like it's just pure athleticism first of all great first step because he's further ahead than everybody i know it's like a weird camera angle but you can tell just based on where that line is where everybody else is he's one of the guys with the best ball get off out of anybody so there there that goes quick first step is ridiculous he's also looks like one of the biggest human beings out of the entire field so that's the freakish size that you just cannot teach you can't coach a guy up to be six foot six 280 with the, with the arms that he has and the hands that he have you just can't and so all of that comes into play here with a little bit of technique to get rid of that offensive tackles arms move his hands out the way he's in there for the sack man too easy let's see what he does here oh my god how quick that was they couldn't even they couldn't even get him out of that wedge right there he split right between them that's a hard ask for this for as athletic as lj mccray is to start going inside taking an inside angle and ask this tackle to try to cut in front of him to stop him there was no hope there i don't even know why the offensive coordinator thought that might work i know it's high school football but god you gotta have a little bit more common sense than that man Woo! okay now we're seeing some pass rush moves i mean again just to go ahead and let you know Whenever I'm doing these film sessions, I say this every film session. I may have seen a couple of plays, but for the most part, what I know about a guy is what I've heard from other people breaking them down and talking about them. So I've heard that he didn't have much of a floor and that he's still pretty raw, um, but not as raw as Joseph Ajanye. But what you're selling 
Georgia on is his potential and his ceiling. I'm seeing some floor here. I'm seeing some technique right here. What is this? What is that? Oh my God, that double move to come back. And then the hand, it's not even just footwork. It's the hand usage as well. To slap him. Oh my God, just a club to the left. Move out my way real quick. You in my way right now. I'm trying to make a play. I'm trying to make a highlight and go to Georgia. Oh my God, that was so poetic and beautiful. That's my favorite play already. What is that? I mean, I guess when, you, when you're watching tape, and this guy's beating people to the outside like this. You tend to want to kick um, a kick step out pretty far to prepare for that, to make up for it. You kick step, that boy beats you inside like that. The footwork, the hand technique. Oh my God, this guy's a way higher floor than I expected from watching this tape. Um, I believe he plays a little bit of tight end as well. We, I hope we see some of that. Oh my God, I mean, we've seen plays against the run. We've seen plays against the pass. This time he's at three tech and he's just as deadly. You play him at five tech in um in like a normal situation, set the edge. You have a dependable pass rusher there as well as you can clearly see on the tape. But if it's an obvious passing down situation, say third and long, that's when you have Michael Williams in his junior year to his right. Um, and then uh, on all the way on the edge, you push LJ McCray to the inside. Maybe maybe you have Joseph Jonah Ajanye to the left of him on the inside. Um, and then and then Damon Wilson over there all the way on the left side. Um, and then we just have fun. That's our third and long obvious pass rush situation. And we get busy and we get look at this from the inside, man. That's the thing about these tweeners. And I, I mean, it's kind of hard to call them a tweener because typically tweeners are like jack of all trades and a master of none. But this guy can be an elite pass rusher from the edge, um, from five tech and the edge setter and can be an elite pass rusher from the interior. And that's the thing with those guys that um, they can play both. You play them on the on the edge as a five tech to stop the run and pass rush occasionally because they have the strength to do that. But with their pass rush upside, you move them to the inside with these non-athletic guards and centers into your offense alignment. That's going to be the result more times than not. That man is dangerous, dog. That man is. I didn't even see what happened this play. Oh, it was so immediate. What is going on? What I don't even know what that was. What are we supposed to do with that? Oh my God, this inside move, the, the ball get off the explosion, the quick first step is ridiculous because he's beating people before the play even really starts. Before these guys even get out of their stance, does LJ McCray know the snap count? How is he doing this? It's not just athleticism. You can be the most explosive athlete ever. You're not gonna do that just by simply having ridiculous athleticism. You gotta know the snap count. You gotta anticipate the snap count. His ball get off is ridiculous, man. Why is he already by the tackle before the running back even has the ball yet? What kind of stuff is this? Look how big of a human being he is. That's ridiculous. Where is he on this play? Where are we at? Okay. Oh my God, now he's standing up. He's not only five tech, he's standing up almost like a wide nine, like an outside three, four linebacker, not formation wise, but as wide as he is, he's all the way, way outside the tackle right now. Oh my God, this guy can play everywhere on the defensive line, I guess, except for nose tackle. This man can play a Bob Miller-like role right here. He plays the Chase Young, I'm a Commanders fan, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, typical five tech role. Then he can kick in and be Jonathan Allen from the three tech as well. This is crazy, man. Oh, my God. The potential here is insane. Look at the heads up play. That's what I love here. Kirby Smart doesn't just want freak athletes. He wants smart guys that are willing to do whatever it takes to win. And this is a very heads up play. This shows intelligence and awareness to find that ball through all of that chaos. You don't know who has the ball. He has the ball. He has the ball. He has the ball. What's going on? This guy's in the way. And he was able to see, okay, now that these guys have the ball, athleticism. Change, switch my hips. Go and make this play immediately. Yes, sir. I mean, easily, of course, he could have depended on one of his linebackers to make that play. But he was like, nah, that's my job. Oh, my God. He's just stronger than that guard. Oh, my God. What is this, a 3-4? Or is this just a regular 4-3? He's just inside. Yeah, I guess he's just inside and that guy's just standing up on the outside, even though it looks like a DB. Is this three defensive linemen, but a DB blitz line, but small linebacker? I don't know. But he is just straight up stronger than this guard, point blank, period. Nothing else to speak on. Oh my God. Look at the look at the drive right there. Look when he engages. Look when he engages with the guy, how far, how much further back. He moves back like three steps trying to block that guy. Lowers his anchor and everything. It doesn't matter. ALJ McCray. And then on top of just completely bullying this guy also in there for the tackle i mean you see how strong his one arm is 
He tackled the running back with one arm. One arm, get off of me, guard. Other arm, tackle the running back. That's that's ferocious, man. That's ridiculous, man. As now he's the three tech inside again. I love these tackles. It looks like he engulfs people. He just looks so much bigger than everybody. Three tech again, get off of me. I'm in there on the run play. I love the fact that he makes tackles for losses, not just sacks, but tackles for losses. He's contributing against the run and the pass. He's not. Oh my god! I don't know what they thought they were doing here. Shouts out to the defensive coordinator for asking everybody to kind of cut inside a cut to the left a little bit because that's why they were able to get through everybody cut to the left the offensive line just wasn't ready for that and the dam broke the dam just broke all hell broke loose it was flooding and the quarterback just got obliterated poor baby all right we have him at five tech once again oh my god was that a did you try to block lj mccray with a tight end and that's it no help oh my god that was like a it was like a punching bag. He just moved them out the way and just went and made the play. I love how fidgety he is, too. Like, just in case the running back goes outside to the left or cuts inside to the right. Look at him. He's like, oh, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready. Knees bent. Ready. Whichever way you go, I'm right with you. Oh, my God. Okay, this is him blocking that tight end. Ty Hartley might take this guy a tight end and do something with him. Okay, we got one tight end play. That's cool. Oh, we get another tight end play? Where is he at? Okay hands okay caught it with his hands and not just his body yards after catch wait a minute look how smooth that catch was i love the blocking on the other play too i should have went back and talked about that but you saw how smooth he caught that with his hands not his body hands catcher maybe we can use him as a utility tight end to catch teams off guard i mean he is a freak athlete okay underneath okay threw it at his shoestrings and he still was able to go down and get it he has really good hands I, mean, I don't know if that necessarily matters. I don't, you know, I'm joking about Ty Harley using them. Maybe he would, but hey, man. I mean, look how smooth he makes it look. He doesn't look like a defensive lineman playing tight end. He looks like an actual really good tight end and a really good defensive lineman. He's making these catches make looks uh, look so easy. And then right back to the edge work. Right back to the edge work. Right back to it. Back inside. Oh my God, that was a nice stunt. Good stunt design by the defensive line. Or was that just a blitz? Was that not a. Am I tripping? Was that a stunt or was that just a... Oh, no, that wasn't even a stunt. The linebacker made it kind of look like a stunt because he thought LJ McCray was going outside originally. Then LJ McCray cut back inside, so the linebacker was like, well, that's that's gone. I have no opportunity here, so I might as well try to go outside and keep some contained. LJ McCray beat his guy so bad, bruh. Oh, my God. Those inside moves, that looking like you're going to rush to the outside and then swimming back with a club oh my god yo he's destroying people with that consistently now we have him back at defensive tackle interior defensive line he is just stronger than people but there's also some technique to it he's throwing people off of him he's not just doing bull rushes he's using his hands and getting rid of people like get off of me i'm trying to get your quarterback don't you see that yo man and, oh my god i don't even know this tackle LJ McCray wasn't even as low as I would like him to be on this play. And he still was able to abuse that tackle. I don't know why he was standing straight up, running at the guy, but it worked out and I liked it. All right, only three defensive linemen. Okay, and that that offensive tackle did a great job kick stepping, kick, uh, kick stepping with him. My fault. Ooh, I'm slipping. Haven't done a film session in a while. That's probably what it is. But the, the tackle did a great job of kick-stepping with him and mirroring his movements, man. Just sticking with him. And then he had to just cut it back inside. He didn't lose contain. And boy, that's one big complaint I had about Chase Young and Montez Sweat a couple of years ago. Is that they would just spend so much energy rushing upfield without keeping the contain. The quarterback could just easily step up and just go right where they used to be or supposed to be. And LJ McCray doesn't allow that. Great job by the offensive tackle. But LJ McCray is just... He's just a different type of guy. Yo, I mean, LJ McCray unblocked is crazy, dog. You see what he's doing to people. Why are you going to leave this man unblocked and think he won't destroy whoever has the ball in their hands at the time? We got him on edge setting again. Again, I don't like why he's standing up so tall. If I had to say one thing, why? Why does he just explode off the ball just to go up rather than forward? Like, what do we... Is he trying to two-gap? Maybe he's trying to two-gap. Maybe... But even then, attack the offensive lineman and then sit still and see which way the, the ball carrier may go. Now, a great job of getting rid of the guy, but it also kind of looked like they were just going to the next level anyway and was ready to block somebody else. So I don't know how much credit to give you there. Um, but yeah, I don't like how he's just standing right up out of his stance. That's a little weird. Other than that, I'm loving what I'm seeing, man. We can coach that out of him. If anybody can, it's just, oh my God, why does, why does he look so violent? Why does he look like he's beating people up? 
He looks like he's bullying people, like he's stuffing people in the lockers. I mean, what did he do? Was that a tight? Stop blocking LJ McCray with a tight end. Stop blocking him with a tight end. He's going into a senior season. I'm warning all offensive coordinators in Florida that have to go against this guy this season. Stop blocking LJ McCray with a tight end. It's never going to work. It's never going to end. Let me see what we got. Yeah, and then he cut back inside against the offensive tackle, and he wasn't ready again. That little inside move of his is deadly. I, it's undefeated so far. Now, granted, these... Oh, my God. Why did he bully that guy? That had nothing to do with the play. The guy wasn't even really looking at him like, God. Oh, poor running back. Oh, bully. Um, But, yeah, these huddle highlights... Oh, my God. He just destroyed, like, three people. These huddle highlights are, um, of course, highlights. They're not pure film session. It's not showing us positives and negatives. It's only showing the positives for the most part, even though we can still take some negatives out of this, just like him coming, standing straight up out of his stance sometimes. But I'm loving what I'm seeing. When he when he goes against a, a tight end, it's like an automatic win for him, and that's what it's supposed to be. But even so, what just happened here? He destroyed an offensive line. Look at all of the chaos he's causing. Everybody, I mean, granted, it's also a great job by another one of his players, but boy, they completely destroyed that play. If I'm the offensive coordinator, I, I throw that play away. I take it out of the, the playbook um, booklet, and, uh, and I burn it after that because that's ridiculous. Great catch again, man. Great catch, man. He moves like Darnell Washington. I'm not going to lie. It looks very Darnell Washington. Because like, Darnell Washington isn't the fastest guy. He's just faster than he should be. LJ McCray kind of looks like that. I mean, Ty Harley. Hey, I ain't going to lie, man. You, hey, think about it. Ty Harley, think about it. Think about it. This guy, it, it looks a lot like Darnell Washington. He's, he's the biggest guy on the field. He's faster than he should be. He's not a blazer, of course. I mean, 6'6", six 280. Six, I mean, what do you expect? But... Um, but he looks faster than he should be and he has natural hands. He knows how to get open in a zone I know this is defensive line tape, but hey, man Hey, man Ty Harley think about it. Oh my god. What was that? Look at the footwork See how fast he was back there. What is going on? Okay blocking. Oh, no, never mind go out I mean they trust him as a tight end so much. They're giving him design plays where they give they know pre-snap they're giving them the ball this is not just scan the field and then if he's open maybe we'll throw it to him no they they called the play in late delayed screen to tight end screen to him like and this is beautifully designed and then it's just darnell washington coming down the field um you gotta tackle him by taking his legs up out of him that's what you gotta do against guys like darnell washington lj mccray they have the ball in their hands you gotta attack their legs there's no other way you're bringing them down you try to attack them at the hips or higher you're quite likely to get ran over now his hands are ridiculous now i ain't gonna lie dog like i was joking like in the very beginning of this video but i think nah for real we might need to try him at tight end for real and i know we got elias williams coming in i believe that's his name in the 2025 class i know we got lawson lucky and oscar delp is going to take over next year we got pierce berlin lawson lucky coming in with this 2023 class they're true freshmen right now but hey man hey man this is ridiculous look at him against the run i love it he looks like a, a a refrigerator down there like everybody else is bouncing around moving around this guy is cemented to the ground you're not you're not making a move backwards at all he is standing perfectly tall and getting to where he wants to go that's what it looked like these past two plays everybody else is getting thrown around or whatever the only reason he's even moving to the left is because he's looking that way on this play the offensive tackle probably thinks he's doing a great job but really that's the way lj mccray wants to go anyway and that's why he's in on the play and then again the next play it literally looks like he's the heaviest thing on the field that nobody can move i mean all of this contact and stuff and he's not moving these two plays Oh, my Lord. I mean, look at all these people that made contact with him. And he lost no ground at all. Lost no ground and is right there to make the play. This guy can play against the run, against the pass. Georgia is salivating over this guy. I see why they feel like you can argue he has the highest ceiling of this class. And especially if, you, if you're Georgia and you believe, and I, and I, assume, I think I agree, I believe Georgia um, does have the best developers in the country as an overall staff, especially defensive line. You believe you can take a guy with a oh my god what just happened? What just you can take a guy with a ceiling this high, and and then turn them into a, a a diamond into a beautiful gem, 
all you need is just a couple of years with them and they're they're a potential first overall pick that's the type of that's the type of ceiling lj mccray has that trevon walker ceiling he just needs to get into the georgia coaching program nutrition program weight program strength and conditioning program and we can truly make something out of him dog and and i just i know i was talking over it but what just happened is this a tight end or is this a tackle what just happened how are you mr here to here no i'm sorry i know i keep replaying but this tackle starts here and within two seconds from being on what the 46 yard line he's all the way back at the 50 in less than a second what is going on i just feel so sorry for the running back i know he's so disappointed i know the running back is so disappointed i mean golly y'all trying to willy beaming him from any given sunday but it's not even on purpose you can tell this tackle did everything in his might to try to do what he could. And LJ McCray is just, oh my God. Oh my God. Didn't LJ McCray had backup just in case as well? But golly, man. All right, what's going on on this play? I don't even know what's. Oh, LJ McCray went out as a tight. Oh, he was a tight end in that play and he ran somebody over. Oh my God. Now, hold on. We got to go back to the other play, though. That was. That was bullying. This, this was bullying, dog. What is that? I just had to see it one more time. I had to see it one more time, man, before we dip up out of here, man. That's ridiculous. But now, nah, man, that's the end of this video, man. This boy, LJ McCray, is something serious, dog. I think he has a legit shot to actually be a really good tight end if he wanted to. He shows a lot of Darnell. Looks very Darnell Washington-like. Um, I wish I would have saw more blocking snaps, but the one or two times we saw him block... He actually looked really good at it. Now, he may not be Darnell Washington level. Otherwise, they probably say forget edge rusher or defensive lineman. Go ahead and move the tight end. Um, but either way, as long as we get him to Georgia, I'm happy no matter what he wants to play. If he wants to be the quarterback, just get me LJ McCray with what I've seen today. Just let him play whatever he wants to play. This guy is so talented. I'm joking about the quarterback part. But if he wants to play tight end, if he wants to play defensive end, let him do or maybe both. I mean, honestly, this guy is so freakishly talented. Again, you can't teach the size and athleticism that he has the the quick ball get off first step explosion off the snap you just cannot teach this stuff here man so hey man georgia do what you got to do to get this guy man i'm telling you and again i love the fact that with the way our our recruiting um list right now looks with the defensive lineman we already have committed i don't think an lj mccray commitment or signing will cause any of the guys that we already have to leave if anything joseph jonah Ajanye and lj mccray headline the group and i'm really excited about that dog i really am i think this group could be so dominant and phenomenal for so long to come i really think this group man Again, led by Joseph Jonah Ajanya and LJ McCray, if we get him. You never know. We're still probably heavy on Williams Winery. And I heard that we're actually in better with Aiden Breland than we originally thought, like a few couple of months ago, maybe a few weeks ago. Um, and then he was wearing that headband in California, nowhere near Georgia, like practicing for his high school team, like stretching before the game. He had a Georgia headband on. He said it's because it's the only red that matches that well with his high school's colors. Um, but nah, I think we can read in a little bit more than that. Now, I'm not saying we're getting alien breeland um but that's just really cool and fun to look at I, again i've heard that we have a little bit more momentum now than we had a few weeks ago though especially with nathaniel frazier committing to georgia who's his teammate um but yeah man i'm really excited about lj mccray i haven't even tried to pronounce his first name yet i think it's lowell 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 i don't know i'm just gonna call him lj mccray but i feel like i shouldn't go the whole video without at least attempting and making myself look stupid but yeah man that's the man but make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content like this and all kinds of content i'm coming out with again we're still working i'm doing like clips of of highlights of georgia players at the nfl level what they're doing in preseason games what they're doing in the regular season stuff as well so stay tuned for all of that um i'm trying to get to a certain amount of subscribers so i can get the channel monetized so if you haven't subscribed please do that because i'm really trying to take this channel to the next level because once it's monetized i have no choice but to prioritize it and, and prioritize it and really come out with like content every day type of stuff it's like literally no excuse at that point so that's my main goal right there and man i really appreciate y'all again stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button because i'm coming with crazy content infinite content for georgia i hope y'all enjoy it and then make sure y'all stay tuned i really appreciate y'all next step is to work on sponsorships and i gotta get monetized and man i'm really excited i'm gonna catch y'all later I'm out.